Hey guys, welcome to How to Play and Should I Play Friday. So Friday is a single player board game and uh, in this game you play as Friday and you live on a desert island and one day this guy here, Robinson, he crashes his boat on the edge of your island and he rocks up and it's your job to help get him off the island. Um, it's designed by Freedom Feast, and I would call this game a single player deck builder, which is really cool because I really like deck builders. So, how does it work? I've set it up here. We have three piles of cards. We have the phase indication. We have two pirates, so these are selected at random at the start of the game. We have 20 life, and then two in reserve. Now, I've set up an easy, simple game, which isn't actually that easy and simple. And it recommends you take out the very stupid aging card. And you can tell it's an aging card because he has a beard and hair at the bottom. So this is an aging card. It's also got two little life points at the top. So this one we'll take out because we're not good enough. So we can't play with that. So what do we have here? Well, we have three piles of cards. These here are aging cards. And you can tell that because they have beards on them at the bottom. So we have advanced aging cards. These have got white hair and beards and the normal ones have black hair and beards, so he's not quite so old, he's super old. And as you get old, you get moronic, suicidal, and very hungry. So uh, that's what life has in store for you, Robinson. So what we're gonna do is we're going to shuffle the advanced cards, place them at the bottom here. We are then gonna shuffle the normal cards and place them on top, like that. Over here we have the hazard deck, and a hazard card comes in two halves. This is the hazard half, this is the fighting half. So when it's in the hazard deck, we will be looking at this half, and this is the hazard we need to overcome. So we are gonna try and further explore the island, and to do that, we will look at the phase. We're in the green phase, so it has a difficulty of two. This means we need to have a total of two or more from our fighting cards to be able to pass this hazard. This number here tells us how many of the fight cards we can draw for free at the start of this hazard. So that's that number there. This deck here is the fight deck. And you'll see in this deck, these cards, they look kind of like the aging cards, but they don't have the beard at the bottom and they only have one life point up here. They will all have a number at the top. And this deck varies from one, two, it has twos, ones, zeros, and negative ones. So it has a lot of zeros and negative ones. Robinson is very weak and very distracted. So Robinson is essentially me. So I really want him to succeed. So these are the cards that we're gonna try and draw to equal the value of the hazard over here, which you can see even on this one is gonna be quite hard because we just have zeros and negative ones and we need to get a total of two. But you will see in a minute how we can accomplish some of these hazards. So what do you do on a turn in Friday? You will draw two hazard cards like this. You will choose one. These hazards are exactly the same. So uh, we will just choose this one. And then we are gonna try and defeat this hazard. So we're gonna defeat it by using our fight cards. So we get to draw three free fight cards. Say that 10 times fast. Okay, card number one is a one. Robinson was focused. Good work, Robinson. So we only need one more. And another one. Okay, that was actually supremely lucky because there are only three ones in this deck and we managed to get two of them. So we do get to draw three free cards but we don't have to. If we accomplish the mission like we have already, we can just stop there. So let's stop there. We've passed this mission. So when you pass the mission, you will take the cards that you played and put them in your fight card discard pile. You will also take the hazard card, which has now become a new fight card, which is pretty cool, strength two, and we will also keep that in our discard pile. So we'll get that later on. So let's try another hazard. Okay we can try a nice easy go to the wreck or we can try and fight wild animals. I think I'm gonna try and fight wild animals because I reckon I can take that chicken. So, now you might be thinking this is a stupid idea because some of our ones have already gone, but bear with me because I think that sometimes in this game it's actually quite good to fail missions. So, let's do this. Let's draw our four free cards. So there is a negative one. So Robinson's distracted. Let us go, and he's weak, so he's weak and distracted. He's weak again, he's extra weak, and he's 
supremely weak. He's turbo weak. Robinson the weak, as he's now known as. Okay, so we've drawn our four free cards, and our total is negative one. So we're actually five below what we need to be. That's not so good. So right now we have two options. We can choose to just fail the mission, or we can choose to try and draw more cards to uh, increase our total. Let's try and draw a card. So to do that, we will just lose a life. So we'll move it from our life supply into the pool. So now we're on 19 and we get to draw a card. So we've drawn one, he is focused. So now our total is zero. Okay, so we could keep trying to do this to draw lots of cards, but we'll cost a lot of life and we probably won't get up to four because we don't have very really any good cards in here at the moment. So the other thing we can do is just fail the hazard. And when you fail a hazard, the hazard will get returned to this discard pile and we will lose life equal to the difference between what we got, which was zero, and what we needed, which was four. So we will lose four life. One, two, three, four, all gone. However, when we lose these lives, we can discard a card, one card by paying a life cost, and actually trash that card out of the game. So we've lost four life, so because these all cost one, we can actually trash these four rubbish cards, these weak, distracted cards, trash them, take them out of the game. So this card we've lost, and this card we will put back over here because we didn't trash that one, so that will come around again. So we've actually managed to get rid of lots of our bad cards by failing that hazard, but we did lose life as well. Now if we ever get to below zero, we will die, or Robinson will die. So if you get to zero, it's fine, but if you get below zero, then game over, Robinson is dead. Now. Eventually, this deck is going to run out of cards, and when that does, so all of these cards are over here, you will shuffle these cards and place them back over here. But when you do that, you must add the top age card into that deck without looking at it. And then you will shuffle that in. Like that. Now, age cards are just nasty cards. Um, so this one here, when you play this, you lose a life just by playing this card and it provides zero. This one here is another negative card. So these can be pretty nasty. What's also nasty is to get rid of them, like we did, we trashed those cards at the end of that uh, hazard there when we failed. We can trash them, but we need to spend two life, two of the life lost in order to trash the age card so they're harder to get rid of. However, we will also be hopefully adding lots of uh, winning hazard cards from our accomplished hazards. Now, when the hazard deck runs out, we will shuffle the leftover hazards and then put them back here and then change into the next phase. So now we will be in the yellow phase. When we have these hazards, we have to do the yellow number, not the green number. So they get much more difficult. Now you might notice on some of these cards, on the fight cards, they have these special abilities here, plus one card, plus one life. When you play these cards, as soon as they've been played, you can activate the card for its special ability. So for instance, this one, you rotate that card 90 degrees and you draw a new card. This one here then, I can now rotate and draw another card. So some of them let me draw some extra cards. This one here, I rotate and I get another life. So that's quite helpful. So a lot of these cards have special abilities and when choosing what hazard you want to face, if these hazards are exactly the same, you might want to look at the other side and think, do I want a two fight card with no ability or do I want a one fight card with the ability to copy the ability from another card? So that means if I have a card that gives me cards, I can then use this to give me another card as well. So you have these choices. When you choose what hazard you want to fight, you have to think, well, not only can I defeat the, the hazard, but what do I want to get out of the hazard if I do manage to defeat it? So eventually you will get through into the red phase, and if you manage to pass the red phase, you then have the fun of fighting the pirates. So uh, of course, as we've all seen Castaway, when he escapes the island, he has to fight pirates. So uh, you can fight these in any order you like. So let's fight this one. And this is just like a hazard. We get to draw eight free cards, and we have to have a total of 30. And that sounds hard, and it is hard. Um, this one is quite interesting, because this value is uh, the, uh, it's, you just have to fight all of the, of the hazard cards. Uh, so. That can be easy, depending on how many of these you manage to get through, but if you failed a lot of them, then there's gonna be a lot of hazard cards left at the end. So that one varies, but the pirates are crazy difficult. Um, but if you do manage to defeat them, then you win the game. I've played this a couple of times, and I've only managed to win it once on easy. So that says two things. Either the game is hard, or 
I'm not very good at this game. I'll let you decide which one of those is true. So that's how to play this game, Friday. But should you play Friday? Yeah, I reckon you should. If you like deck building games especially. Um, I know that it seems weird to play a single player game and some people are like, why would you play a single player board game? The reason you play board games is to play with other people. And that is true. That is the main reason I play board games. But it is nice to be able to have a game that you can play by yourself. It's actually quite fun to play it with someone and just make the decisions together as a cooperative game. I mean, a lot of cooperative games where you do play with other people, you could just play them on your own. So it's just a really nice experience. Thematically, it, it really pulls you in. You really start rooting for Robinson and when he draws a whole bunch of weak cards in a row, you're like screaming at him, Robinson, what are you doing? Um, especially when you're trying to sail out to a raft and he draws all the negative one cards, that, uh, that can be quite fun. Um, but it gives you so many complicated decisions. Do you decide to fail a mission on purpose and lose life, but you get rid of the cards? Or if the, the, this card is gonna give you a really nice fight card, do you throw lots of life into it to draw the cards to get where you are? Sometimes I've tried to do that and drawn negative ones and ended up losing even more life when I eventually decided to fail the hazard. So the decisions are quite difficult to make and can have a big impact on the game. And I really, really like that. And it's really, how the kind of the clock system works. If you burn through this deck quickly, that's good because it means that you're getting lots of cards, but you will age and then you will have to add these cards in as well. If you fail lots of these missions, it's good because you can get rid of these cards, but that means when you move into the next phase, you now have even more of these missions in here. So sometimes if you always choose the easy missions, uh, that's fine, it means you've passed a lot of missions, but now when you move into the yellow phase, you have a lot of difficult cards here that you have to fight. So there's some really difficult decisions to make and it's a difficult, but not too difficult game. I, I haven't felt like I've been playing it and going like, this is just too difficult, I'm not enjoying this. Um, I've always felt like I could win if I just did something differently, if I made a better decision, if I played this more, if I was just better, I would be, uh, yeah. So definitely give it a go if, uh, and it's small and it's actually quite cheap. Uh, so if you do see it in a board game shop and every now and then you find yourself thinking, I would love to play a board game and I'm on my own, give Friday a go. Definitely. So uh, thanks for watching this video. And if you want to check out any of our podcasts or any of our written reviews, go to forchitsandgiggles.com. And until then, have fun playing Friday.